Well, our moms think we're funny. Hey, I'm a Comey. Mm. Holy fuck, I didn't know we were getting started like that. Like, yeah, to get started. I'm still <laughs> drinking my pineapple juice, dude. Well, you know. No, should not, we... not well. We can do We can't use that. I'm drinking my we, pineapple juice. You should be ready to podcast at any time. I wasn't even on fucking camera, dude. You never, you never know when the podcast is going to strike. No, we, we, we honestly are we, are we we doing... can't because I got to. <laughs> well, I, I, are we doing the, uh, the podcast on camera again? Uh, actually, no, we're not even recording. Shit, what am I worried about? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, we're good. <laughs> Because I, I was drinking my pineapple juice, and I was like, I can't have like you know product placement in here, but <laughs> oh, yeah. But now we're giving it a break here. Mm, so hey everybody, oh hey everybody. <laughs> my name is Turk One Eighty Two. Yeah, and I'm a Comey still. Yep, Nothing's and changed. Um, and uh, today we are going to talk about um, uh, the Purge. Yeah. Yes. The. Uh, that beautiful masterpiece of cinema. Yes, um, just something that is just fantastic. It just even the very concept of it was just like, wow, this is um, you know, I don't understand what took so long for something like this to be made. Right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about the purge. Let's do it. So uh, I'll let you start. Well, I'll I'll start. Um, are, are you about ready to lose your fucking mind here? No, oh, I am. I'm ready to lose my mind. I have not seen The Purge. Really? Really. Oh, well, here's a good, uh, this is really good that we're doing this then because I have not seen The Purge either. That's good news. I, I thought I was some kind of uh, grotesque freak of nature. No, you are, but <laughs> it's not because you haven't seen The Purge. Thanks for that, Turk. I appreciate that. No, no, no this is out of love, dude. <laughs> so, uh,. The Purge was a film franchise that began in 2013. Okay. Sounds about um, right. Directed by the franchise creator, DeMonico. He directed two of the sequels, wrote the Demon screen... DeMonico? DeMonico. Okay. D-E capital M-O-N-A-C-O. And Bingo was his name. James DeMonico. Uh, he directed two of the sequels. He wrote the screenplays for all, including the yet unnamed Purge 5 which he has hinted in interviews could be the end of the franchise. Thank Christ. What about the TV series? Um, the franchise has spawned a television series. DeMonico wrote its pilot episode. Hmm. Uh, apparently, The Purge has received a generally mixed critical reception, mainly for the screenwriting and the cliched stories, but was praised for the concept, acting, style, and action sequences. It was praised for the concept? Really? <laughs> that seemed like a good concept? The concept is exactly why I did not watch it. Um, I agree. I, as soon as I saw the trailer for it, I thought, well, that looks really stupid. Yep. And uh, then they actually start showing these action sequences in the trailer, and I'm like, this looks incredibly stupid. There's nothing in hell that could make me want to watch this. And then they came out with another, and I thought, this looks even stupider. And then they came out with a third and a fourth, and it's like, I, it makes me angry that this exists. And, yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it seems like the stupidest idea imaginable to me. No, I, I don't, I don't get it. Um, the, I know about, um, I know about what the, the part is supposed to be, you know, the one night a year, blah, 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 blah. So first off, let's say, let's say that, let's say just for the, the point of, the purpose of simplifying this, let's say the purge, the purge happens on, um, New Year's Eve, so December thirty first, um, up until like six o'clock, uh, January first. Yeah, it's a it's a twelve hour period. This is so from six in the, from six in the um, evening to six in the morning. Yeah. Okay. So let's say at um, seven seven a.m. January first, my neighbor is like, you know, oh. Looks like you guys escaped the purge, huh? Well, we'll get you next time, you black bastard. <laughs> so now I gotta wait. 365 days. We're just waiting, waiting till I get the chance to kill this motherfucker. <laughs> when, when it's legal. Um, because obviously, you know, if it's gonna be legal, why would I waste my time? But then, that's just premeditated. You know, mm -hmm. if, other than that, I could probably get over it. Now, yeah, this guy, I'm like, you know what, honey... <laughs> and now let's go, or go ahead and just, you know, we've been talking about moving. Let's just go ahead and just do that. Let's just 
find another place to live, at least get away from these people or something, because I'm not going to risk my life, your life, my career, everything else, you know, by doing something stupid like killing this guy. Oh, wait, it's going to be legal, <laughs> you know, in a year? Well, I guess we can probably tough it out, because I don't want to move somewhere else and then like, oh, God, now i got to drive all the way over there. And you know it's going to be a bitch, you know, trying to drive to like another place to kill somebody during the purge. Oh, yeah. So you got to get there in advance and get a hotel room. And then, like, how, how legally does this work out? So, let's say that it's, like, I don't know, it's January 1st, it's 5.55 a.m., and I stab you. Ugh, ugh. And you're, you're still alive, but then you die at January 1st at 6.15 a.m. Hmm. You didn't die during the time that the purge was legal. You died afterwards. But you died because of wounds that I inflicted on you. Am yep. I am I still in the clear? Or am I not? Uh, I think the way it works in the movies, and I'm just basing this off of what I've seen in the trailer, is that they actually make the announcement that the purge has begun. So I think that anything that even leads up to a death before that becomes a problem. No, I'm saying that I, I stabbed you during the purge. But you died after oh, the 12 after hours is over. it's over. That's a good question. I don't know. And then, if I've been thinking about killing you all this time, <laughs> and isn't that still premeditated? Well, yeah. So then, would that not be legal? I don't think that thinking about murdering somebody is illegal. Yeah, but it's conspiracy to commit murder. Because I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I'm not going to do it yet, but, you know, as soon as it turns <laughs> this time, I mean, I've got my gun ready. That's the thing. I get my guns and my knives and everything ready. I'm standing outside your house, like a prom date, like, you know, just waiting, <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just waiting to, to go knock on the door. That's, that's premeditation. Um, holy shit, the first movie had a budget of $3 million and grossed into $90 million worldwide. Yep. Holy shit. Um... There's no way it's got a 40% on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm. Come on. Yeah, I'm afraid so, dude. That's ridiculous. Nah, ridiculous or not, yeah. Fuck this. Fuck Rotten Tomatoes. Are you upset because it's so low or upset because it's so high? Upset that it's so high. Okay. That's what I thought, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what what did we watch the other day that we were talking about? Like, it only had a 22%? Um, yeah, because I compared it to, um... Oh, well, it was, uh... See, we I compared it last night to uh, X Men Dark Phoenix had a twenty three percent. Yeah, and we turned to Sucker Punch, which had a twenty two percent. Yeah, there's no way the Purge has almost twice as much of a score on Rotten Tomatoes as Sucker Punch. Fuck that. Okay, so I think we should rewrite this. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm going to say this because we talked about this once before, and I was like, okay, no, I was there. I think the Purge is stupid, but I know how to bring down the Purge. Which is, when it's time for Purge, I'm going to blow up the police station, <laughs> yep, the fire department, and the hospitals. So that once the Purge is over, you have no, no emergency rescue, and there's no one there to put out the fires, and there's no one there to police everything afterwards. So it's going to be complete chaos and anarchy in that town, and it's going to take a long time to rebuild and repair and reestablish any of that stuff. And so that means during that time, it's pretty much lawless. And remember, whatever you do now is not legal. Mm -hmm. And some people aren't going to give a shit. Yeah, that's going to end the purge real quick. Yeah, yeah. See, I would just... Uh, I, I would be spending that time setting up a way to just completely, like, fuck the rich people who aren't involved with it, you know? No, I think that's kind of... Well, I think if I remember, like, reading the thing correctly... I think the purge 2 is where that happens or some shit. Well, the first one... Where the people that were that were going after it was really this was one particular family. Mm -hmm. They were going after them, but it was all like a big setup because the guy made money um, in uh, security to protect people during the purge, <laughs> and the, his neighbors weren't as rich as he was. Yeah, and so they were all jealous. Hmm. And I'm like, okay. Um, that's so fucking stupid. That is really stupid. The other ones didn't actually focus more on like you know the purging or whatever. But this one was like, oh hey, we want to kill this guy because he's making money off of like the, they like, said the whole security, and I, I was like, I could be like not getting things exactly right because I haven't watched it because I haven't had any interest in it. Right. But I'm like, that's so goddamn dumb. And then like, Riser <laughs> about to kill like the rest of the family members with a bunch of shit going back and forth. It's like, bing bong, 
purchase over. And it's like, <laughs> oh, well, I guess we'll go back now. See you tomorrow, neighbor. No, fuck you. Fuck you not seeing me tomorrow. <laughs> and, and that's when I would just be like, you know what? I really don't give a shit about waiting until next year. Right. I'm just going to kill your dumb ass now. <laughs> and if I kill all of you right now, right, I'll just say it all happened, you know, like an hour ago. Right. Um, I mean, I guess, I guess that would be a good way to end the movie. Would just be like everybody acting like, oh no, this is all fine. And then him just standing up and being like, no, fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't give a shit that the purge isn't over. All right, um, okay, look at this though, too. Think about how many times you've had like disagreements with people. And after you cool down and you say, okay, let me think about this. Maybe I was wrong. Or maybe that person comes to you and says, hey, maybe I, I was wrong about this. I'm so sorry. Right. This is going on in my life. and you know, Or I was just wrong. I, I thought you were saying this, but you actually meant something else. Think about all of the the misunderstandings or the trolling and stuff that goes on on like the internet. Right. Think about how you send somebody a text or you um you like send an email and because there's no there's there's no like personality or emotion in text, you misunderstand what they mean when they may be trying to j uh, they joking or whatever. Mm -hmm. But now you're like, oh fuck that. You know, the purge is in a month, I'm gonna purge your sorry ass. But like what because that's what you're thinking now. I don't need to bother trying to you know make things better or get along with people right. or try to figure out what their true intentions were. No, fuck it. In two months, there's going to be a purge. We'll see You know who's the asshole. You know, <laughs> it, the whole concept is dumb. And you're just holding on to shit, just waiting until the end. And then when you think that things like, like okay, you and I get into a, like a disagreement about something. Right. And then um, and I, I think, okay, everything's cool. We, we have a talk. Everything's cool. We, you and I are friends. And then, like, three months later, like, you're fucking stabbing me while we're doing a pox. I'm like, what the hell's going on? It's like, remember that fight? I thought we were over there. No, we were fucking over with that. I was just waiting to purge. I'm like, what well, shit? That was, was weeks ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> Motherfucker. I'm thinking that they were all cool in the gang. You know, you're just sitting there just stewing on it, just waiting, just waiting. <laughs> oh, according to Wikipedia, it's legal during that period to do all this murder, arson, theft, and rape, except against government officials. Well, then it's not really legal, is it? Because those are the people that are really fucking me over right. that I want revenge against. They're the ones I would want to target. And all emergency services are unavailable until 7 a.m. Right. But after 7 a.m., though, like I said, if I blow up the hospital, good luck for all you people that actually survived the purge and you're like, oh, oh, my hand was kind of crushed. I got a broken leg. Right. You know, I'm on fire. Yeah, well, sucks to be you. <laughs> they said the whole concept is just ridiculously stupid. And they're loose, like they're flimsy rules. Are so stupid. It's, yeah. it's all just ridiculous. Um, and then the whole idea is like, how about we just make one day where we can get all the aggressions out? If you're just like, okay, so go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Anyway, that's what. That's why I hate about it. The whole thing just seems just so poorly thought through. It was. Yeah. It was. It was like something that that you did in like an improv class, and then <laughs> you know, or like you just like went on Reddit and went like our prompts, and you're like, oh, hey, this sounds good. I'm gonna make a whole movie about that. <laughs> And what's uh it's it's all really dumb. It's all really dumb. Uh, yeah, and here's here's a stupid thing. They're saying that the United States has become virtually crime free and the unemployment rate has dropped to one percent because of the purge. It's like fuck that. Well you know why? Because in the very first purge they went out and killed all the homeless people. <laughs> Pretty much. Ugh. Yeah, you're right. The, the, the neighbors get pissed off at them because they've been capitalizing on the security stuff. So yeah, this is this is retarded. So what can we do to actually fix this movie? All right. So do you have a, you have a plan already? I don't. I I think that it's I think that it's a bad idea from the very start. I think that it's got a bad premise from the beginning, so I wouldn't know how to really fix that short of stripping it down to literally zero and building up from, like, from absolute nothing. Okay. So I would say that, start off with, it shouldn't be once a year, it should be once a month. <laughs> okay. Interesting take. Yeah, because, again, you remember talking about, you're, like, you're, just, you're stewing on stuff, waiting for, you know, to be a year. That's one, and two, I think that there should be like certain like guidelines around around the purging to. Because so let's just say that you and I, uh, we we got people that we're waiting so we can go purge them, okay? Okay. And so we're gonna purge these people, um, 
and the people we that we don't like or that or that kind of screw it because obviously it's not going to just be somebody that um that you know I don't know, cut me off in traffic. I'm not going to waste all my time trying to figure out who they are so I can go purge them. There's going to be someone that's really done some kind of like damage to me that, um, that I don't like. Well, well, obviously, if they did some damage to me, I don't like it, but it's going to be something that's really, really bothered me. Right. Um, in that case, then, more than likely, that person has got something more than what I have, probably like money or power or whatever, which... In that case, then, they're probably going to have some really great defense system that they're not going to bother going out. And that's the other thing, too. The purge is <clears throat> it's pretty much happening with um, poor people. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Because rich people are going to have these security systems and stuff, and they're, they're, um, they're not going to be home. Mm-hmm. They're not going to be out there in the street you know, trying to kill somebody, and more than likely they'll hire somebody to go kill people they don't like, or just not even bother. You can mm-hmm. sit back and just watch everyone else. Why am I going to risk my life when I don't have to? So it's just the poor people that are doing that. So if you and I want to go purge somebody, the people that we really want to purge, we're not going to be able to touch. Right. So that's, that's part of that. And two, let's say that they are out there because they're just sadistic assholes. They're going to have like much better equipment than I am. They're probably going to be like you know taking all kinds of martial arts classes and stuff for hand to hand combat. They have like big ass guns and all you know. <laughs> and they'll be walking around in like a like a full like uh, bulletproof body armor suit. You know that uh, that we're not going to have. Right. So we're not going to really be able to to com- to compete with them. Right. That and that kind of sucks. So we're pretty much just going to be um, I don't know, just dead. Yeah. I think I'm I think I'm formulating some ideas here. So with that, what I'm getting to is if we if our plan is just to wait and get revenge on these people, we really don't stand a chance. Mm-hmm. So you have to find some way to even the playing field. So when purge night comes, you everyone has to it has to be on the same par. So that means that you have to um either have to all have the same kind of weapon or or whatever it is. Otherwise, it is kind of this this massacre, which I get that the whole point of it is like, oh well, it's not really about you know people really exercising their their rights to you know let out all their frustration and blah blah. blah. It really is this whole population control thing or getting rid of the the lesser people or whatnot. But you have to give it something more to make people want to actually take part in it when the odds are against them. Mm-hmm. And since you as far as I've seen to me the trailers and stuff that. People don't really band together to fight. It's always like a you know, everyone's you know, like um, everyone's just kind of out for themselves. Right. So it's those are those are things that I struggle with as far as trying to do that. And so, but I'm saying if you if you make it um if you make it like once a month, mm-hmm. and you and you find a way to oh I got it okay. You treat the purge like the running man. Hmm. So you, you take people and you and you build like a big, huge like purge stadium. Um, something, something that's huge, kind of like the running man used like the the the, um, the ruins of like, L.A. after like the uh, the uh, earthquake. Right. So not not citywide because you don't want to have you don't want to be chasing people down after twelve hours. But it has to be at least a couple a couple blocks. Right, right. Um, and then you you kind of like a almost almost like a like a battle royale video game. Hmm. Um, but don't you don't have any like guns. Like if you if there are like a like a gun, maybe the gun only has got like a couple bullets in it. Right, right. So you'll be a couple uh, some guns laying all around in different places, but they only gonna have a couple shots in it because you don't want that 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 kind of ruins the fun. You want to be grisly. You want to be gruesome. Mm-hmm. And so. Yeah, people that have problems because in in my world, if I really want to make the world a better place, if I'm not trying to be a greedy, you know, asshole, I really want the world to be a better place, and I want people to kind of get this all out of the system, as opposed to oh, really, I really want is to just control people, and because that's the one thing about when you're trying to control people, as I see it, mm-hmm. is that you have you need you need certain people in order to continue to do the things you need, like you know. It's all the class system, kind of like um, uh, what's that? Um, uh, uh, Brave New World, the whole class oh, yeah. system. You know, you need people that are going to be able to do certain things. If you're preying upon them, 
then there, there's not going to be the people that are going to take out your trash or do this or do that. <laughs> the people you were after are the people you depend on. Exactly. So, and then the other people that are like this, say still alive, whatever, you can't, you can't count on them to do any of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and you, and you, they're not going to be the ones that are, you can't then take them and throw them, that kind of throw them down into the, uh, like, okay, well now you're the lesser class that, that that's not going to fly. Right. So the, and the other part of that is the way that you get like the, the people that you look down upon that you call lower class, the way that you get them to stay a part of it is that they have to believe <clears throat> that they can somehow like move up. So for any of you guys that have seen um, Battle Angel Alita or Alita Battle Angel as it's called, there's a whole thing about the one guy's like, hey, if you work for me and you can earn enough money that I can get you to the big floating city. And then of course, you know, you find out that going to the big floating city is not really all it's cracked up to be. You know, it doesn't, doesn't all slice out the way you want it to. Right. Um, and I know you haven't seen the movie yet, right? I have not. Okay. So, um, but they work for you doing these things because they think that there's a way out. There's not. But you think that there is, and that's what makes people work hard because they think there's a way out. That's what makes people work hard in everything they do because they think there's a way out of this situation that they're in right now. Mm-hmm. If you don't give them a way out, even in this battling kind of thing, then they really don't have a reason to continue on, not only just with their life in general, but they don't have a reason to continue on with anything they do. So you have to make them believe there's a way out. Mm-hmm. By changing this to a, excuse me, a once a month thing, and then you're putting them in this uh, this like uh, arena. So I can challenge somebody to it. They don't have to accept the challenge. The fact that I challenged you mm-hmm. is all that matters. And you take it and you just do it like a lottery. Or maybe, you know, you yeah, and it's like I'm challenging you. So it's not like I'm just going to, this is a person I want to go enter the, you know, the purge. Yeah. It's like it's going to be me and you. And we dropped in there. We're dropped in there and it's going to be, you know, you know, chaos. Okay. And it's a... Uh, and it's, you know, whoever's still alive after the end of the 12 hours, mm-hmm. you know, you, you, you're you alive. You know, that's it. It's not like, like well, you have to kill the, the person you challenge. No, it's like whoever's still alive. And the thing is, I'm putting you in this arena, but, and you can be killed by anybody, not just me. Right. But I'm putting you in this arena, and uh, because I'm, obviously I'm hoping that you're going to die, and I'm going to find a way to survive. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And so the, the arena is filled with, they say, I don't know, 200 people. So you... You start. You submit your names in there, and let's say that they they either draw them randomly or it's like first come first serve. Right. And then after that, you know, at the uh, come purge night, everybody goes in there. They round them all up or whatever. And if you don't show up, you get shot. Okay. But here's the other part about that is if I challenge someone, so I challenge Joe. Joe's not going to enter the thing. They kill us both. Uh. So it's not this like like well, you you're not going to accept the challenge. We're just going to kill you, and this guy wins. No, they kill us both. Right. Okay. Uh, so they put them both in there, and then if you're still alive at the end of it, hey, you live. But that's the whole thing. And probably probably most people do not make it out of it. Right. But then you get people that are – because you're it's the, the poor people challenging the rich people or the wealthier people or whatnot, then it makes it um, – it makes it seem more balanced. Even if it may not actually be balanced, yeah. it makes it seem more balanced. Okay. Because then I maybe not can't like sh- um, like get to where you are like on an economic scale, but I but I don't have to any shit you hand down to me. I don't have to take your shit. Right. Because right. if you treat me too badly, then I'll just go ahead and I'll just you know I'll be like I want to purge that motherfucker. Yeah. Because at this point it's like I have nothing to lose. You do. Right. <laughs> Shithead, <laughs> and so and so then I and then it just makes people feel more comfortable with that. It's like then they expect their boss to treat them better. Now again, in a city of like several thousand, you know, a couple hundred names, the I the thought that you know, the chance that your name is going to get drawn, you know, whatever that you know that may not happen. Right, but okay. it does make you feel like it. Okay, I like that. Huh. There you go. Okay. Cool. Um, so um, here, here's kind of what I'm thinking. Mine's a little bit different. Cause it's interesting that you used the word chaos. Did I? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you said that when they get dropped in the arena, it's total chaos. Because okay. I'm actually looking at this as uh, my, my take on the purge. And it might like be changed to a title like purging or something like that. <laughs> Although that does kind of sound a bit bulimic. Um, hmm. 
But what I'm thinking here is that rather than this being like a once a night, uh, oh, a one night a year thing or something like that, I'm going to kind of uh, invert the original idea that uh, the Catholics did prior to the Reformation, where they would sell indulgences. Okay. And so I don't That's think funny. I don't think they ever took it quite to the level of like selling people like forgiveness for uh, for murder or something like that. I think it was mostly, um, you know, like, oh, I want to cheat on my wife or whatever, so I'll just pay for forgiveness up front, that kind of thing. Right. But uh, but let's say in this world, in this, like, reimagining of the purge, it's that, you know, if you want to kill somebody, you go and you pay for the rights to do that. Or, you know, that, that also kind of opens up, like, uh, this entire market for killers for hire, because it's like, okay, well... You know, I need you to kill this person for me. I'll pay for you to have the rights to do that, and we'll cover it there. Um, there could also be like different packages for them to to pay for these types of things, whether it's like theft or whatever. Of like, okay, so you want to steal this guy's car? You're paying us for permission to do that, but oh, you're only paying for the basic package. So we're going to give him a 24-hour notice that this is going to happen. So if he wants to get protection or something, he can. That kind of thing. So then it just becomes this whole thing of, like, different, like, different legal battles and people, like, trying to screw each other from, like, a legal perspective as well. And it also, rather than making it, like, the Hollywood perception of anarchy, it's actually more of, like, an anarcho-capitalism thing where it's, like, you know, as long as, long as you're playing by the rules, you know, shit, if you want to, you know, if you want to, like, pay the exorbitant amount of money it would take to get, like, genetically engineered child super soldiers... Go for it. You can do that. Wow. <clears throat> so, at that point, it becomes like the sky's the limit. And you're also not safe from time. It's not like, oh, I'm just going to hunker down for 12 hours and then I'm okay. It's like, oh no, you know, if, if you piss off the wrong person, then they can just pay to completely fuck your shit up, period. So, I, th I think it'd be kind of interesting to explore it from that perspective. Of like... And this this would actually still allow it to kind of be a franchise, honestly, because it's like, okay, well, you've got, you know, maybe maybe somebody pays for the rights to do this, but somebody, like, hacks into the system and fucks up the system and it makes it look like he didn't get the rights for it after all. So now he's framed and he has to clear his name. Um, you've also now, because this is a commodity that people are paying for, you have a black market for it. You have people who are, like, selling, like, counterfeit rights to do this kind of thing, or you have, like, bid wars going on where it's like, oh, I've I've bought a, an indulgence right for murder, you know, I'll, I'll sell it at a markdown, that that kind of thing. So, I, I think that would be the approach I would want to take with it. I wonder if you could be able to, like, to, like um, pay somebody on Fiverr to be like, hey, can you do this for me? <laughs> <laughs> I will kill your neighbor for you. <laughs> for five bucks. The thing with Fiverr is that they always have, like, a, a service that they offer for five bucks, but then, like, it's like, I'll I'll edit your podcast for five bucks. And you go in there and it's like, I will edit five minutes of audio for five bucks. <laughs> for 169 bucks, I'll edit your entire podcast for you. And it's like, oh, you know what? Fuck you, dude. <laughs> I don't need a sample. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to pay you five bucks for five minutes of audio. Who has five minutes of audio that they need to edit? <laughs> Fuck that shit. So... But yeah, no, I, I think that might make it a little more interesting because I mean, just making it this whole thing of like, oh, just you wait. If it were, if it were September sixteenth, I would give you such a thrashing. I mean, that to me is really stupid. But if it becomes this thing of like, oh yeah, you know, you might not want to piss this guy off because he actually has the means of of paying for the rights to to mess your shit up. It's like, oh well, you know, you might not want to pay for the rights to mess this guy's shit up because he can also pay for the rights to defend himself. <laughs> yeah, I think another thing with the purge is that you can't you can't just have like I get the emergency services and all that stuff, mm -hmm. but you can't be like, well, government officials are not. <laughs> yeah, it, when, when you draw the line with a government official, would a secret service be considered a government official? I would think I, so. I mean, so it's, what? Okay, what about uh, members of the IRS? Ooh, I mean, those are people I really want to go after. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm protected. <laughs> yeah, that... I mean, I'm sure they would be protected under those rules. I don't think the IRS would still exist then. You know what, well, you know what would suck? 
is that if you kill somebody and it turns out they were like an FBI agent undercover, like, that's not fair. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought he was just Tim the drug dealer. I didn't know. <laughs> huh? He's a plainclothesman. Yeah. Oh, like, oh, shit. See, that would be an interesting way with, like, the set of rules I'm talking about. It'd be an interesting thing that, like, oh, he buys the rights to go after somebody. Turns out that they are, like, an FBI guy undercover, and nobody told him. So that that could be pretty interesting. Hmm. So, yeah. But, I mean, I think the... Where are we at, by the way, from time was? Uh, we're at 30... 30 minutes. Okay. 30 minutes. Uh, well, let's, let's take a small break here, then. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. All right, we're back. Oh, my God, this is horrible. <laughs> it is. We've, okay. we've got a Tim Kincaid movie playing in the background. <laughs> so now everything's calm back, calm back down. She's got the drum between her legs. But watch when she starts, like... Like playing it again, yeah. she'll be like swinging her hands, but not actually hitting the drum. <laughs> yeah, what what Tim King what Tim Kincaid movie is this playing, Turk? Dad goes no. Um. <laughs> Dad goes nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. Uh, this is the uh, Dad the, goes purging. <laughs> <laughs> Dad goes purging. I'm gonna fuck all of you. <laughs> For the next twelve hours, all gay incest porn is legal. <laughs> Dad goes purging. He's only taking headshots. <laughs> um, this is uh, this is the the occultist. Ah, uh, the occultist. Yeah. Okay. Um. I mean, it's it's a better Tim Kincaid movie than some because it immediately opened up with some nice lady titties. So, um, the uh, some okay lady titties, I guess. The description is a cyborg sleuth must protect a Caribbean president while visiting New York City while his daughter and cruel rebellious island sorceress plot to assassinate him. Okay. <laughs> um, is the do, does Caribbean have presidents? No. Caribbean islands have presidents? Yeah. Um, oh, no. Uh, I, I, I don't know if they do or not. I know that um, eventually her and the sleuth will start sharing the same dream. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I kind of like our uh, our reboots for The Purge. I do still think that... They, I mean, I think it's a really poor concept. Oh, I know, yeah. like, in the, in the other episodes, they, they kind of get down with, like, how The Purge start? I mean, you know, just like when it first started, were people like, you know, right, right into it right away? Or did it take them a while to be like, what? Are, are we doing this? <laughs> yeah. Jeez, Marty, you working your, your your quick five for the comedy floor? Um, uh, but no, it's, um, one, I can't imagine like a government like putting that out there and people are like, yeah, it sounds like fun. Well, let's do it. I'm going to kill my neighbor. Imagine all the people that you lose, that you, so let's say after the purge, someone's got to clean up all the mess. You know, there's fires burning and stuff. So I, I, mean, I would assume you don't go back to work the next day, right? <laughs> because I mean, I would say this: during a purge, all crime is legal. I go to work and I fuck up my computer. Come in, oh no, I can't work. <laughs> my laptop's all fucked up. Who could have done this? Yeah. <laughs> Why? <Yeah>. Why? <laughs> And that's the and people people have talked about that online of like you know why would I go around killing people when I could be like you know committing tax of tax fraud and shit like, yeah I, I could walk out of this with billions and then I'm high class and now I'm protected from the purge next year yeah like or what about like a computer hacker suddenly changing of like oh no we're all government officials these these other people who were government officials glitch in the system <laughs> now they're registered as just normal citizens who are totally vulnerable to this. I mean, like, there's, there's so much else that could have been explored other than, oh yeah, we're all gonna wear clown masks and, like, fucking hit people with axes. It's just stupid. You know what I would do if during a purge? I would, uh, I would hack into the computer system mm -hmm. and I would, um, set the time back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> So then everything from like the past hour, it's like six o'clock. It's like actually it's seven o'clock. All oh, you motherfuckers are guilty of murder. <laughs> I can see that working. Yep. That's what they do. As I would hold the purge on uh, 
like daylight savings time. Yeah. It just really can be. It's like, like do, is, it, is it starting now? Do we already start? I don't know what happens at the end. That's uh, that's one thing that Camelot was talking about when we were watching uh, Hunger Games, which that was more his idea. I didn't want to do that, but um, yeah, you know, the whole thing with Hunger Games is that they start off on those platforms, and it's like, oh, you know, if you step off on the platform before they say go, you blow up. He was like, you know, he'd wait till the countdown where it's like, three, two, and then he would just like fake jump towards the ground to see how many other people jump off first. (laughs) (laughs) There goes half the competition right there. (laughs) Um, So another another way I think I could make The Purge work as a film would be actually presenting it as such a bad idea as it really is. Um, And this would make it like a one-time standalone movie. Uh, you know, just like a done in one, which is what it needs to be. Um, and that would be that, like, they're basically like snake oil salesmen for the government who are pitching this idea, saying, you know, D- don't you just hate all this stuff that's going on? Don't don't you just wish that you could get your frustrations out? Well, we're we're making- Billy Mays here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Billy Mays. <laughs> Introducing the purge! Wow! I don't have to worry about hating my neighbor anymore because my neighbor's dead! <laughs> like, don't you mad that you know, your sidewalk is all free of blood? And <laughs> <laughs> now introducing purge! Look at that! So, there's, there's like gray matter and blood spray all over the place. <laughs> so, like, yeah, so the movie opens up with, you know, stuff like that where it's like, oh, you know, have, have you ever had some asshole cut you off in traffic and you really wish you could do something about that? Welcome to my TED Talk. <laughs> you know, go, going from there, of, of like, they're, they're, you know, you've got these congressmen trying to pitch this as a good idea of like, no, this, this could work, this, this will lower the crime rate, and you have most of the citizenry going, no, this is really stupid. This uh, is me. a... I'm sorry, I hate to cut you off, but... No, that's fine. I think we made a mistake here. Really? But did you, did you see that the guy jogs into work, and he works at Sanford Security Systems? And he drops to the back door and just opens the door and just walks right in. How is <laughs> that like, a mistake? Because I, I think we should be doing less watching this and oh, just watching well, it. That's true. I yeah, think it's the let, mistake. Yeah, let, let's move off here then because I, I think Tim Kincaid makes good uh, let's watch material. But yeah, and so then like, you know, eventually you do have like those those dumber people going, wait a minute, that sounds like it'd be a pretty good idea. Wait a minute, you mean that includes rape? Shit! That's all you had to say? <laughs> I mean, okay, so to be fair, <laughs> could you really, if you if you were a, a raper, right? I am not a raper. I'm so not a raper, mom. <laughs> but if if you were, could you really wait a whole year to get your rape on? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, and I'm not an advocate for that at all. That's, that's, a, that's a horrible, horrible thing. It just yeah. But could you really wait? <laughs> Could you? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just picturing like this, this scenario where it's like a bunch of office workers, and he's like, "Damn, Linda, that's a nice low cut blouse you got there." And she's like, "Fuck off, creep! I'm reporting you to HR." And he just like whips out his Palm Pilot, and he's like, "32 days, Linda. <laughs> 32 days." <laughs> okay, so what about this though? You is, I actually think the purge maybe, maybe actually stop, uh, like rape. Because well, because yeah, because during the purge it's legal. It's like, well, it's legal. Shit, I don't <laughs> oh, want to do it. Shit. Yeah, there's <laughs> that. That just takes all the fun out of it. <laughs> um, but yeah. So then, like, you just you eventually get enough stupid people going, yeah, yeah, I want to do that. And then, of course, you know they they vote to pass the motion, and it happens. And then you have that night, and everything really fucks up. And even though the government's like, oh, we're we're immune from this. It's illegal to do it to us. You have a bunch of stupid, sweaty rednecks whipped up into a frenzy, so they're not going to care. So they fuck up the government as well. And then by the end of it, you've got the original people who were the voice of reason going, we told you this was a bad idea. And you have the government going, this was a really fucking stupid idea. We're not doing that anymore. I have a flaw with you in, in, in your movie. Okay. Is that the, the, the level-headed people, they're like, at the end, they'd already be dead. So they wouldn't be able to tell the government, like, oh, uh, we told you it was a bad there, idea. You know they'd all be dead. There is that. <laughs> um, there always has to be at least that one level-headed person who lives, though. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just not Hollywood, man. Um, now, police officers are not government. They're their state. Oh, uh, right? there's that. Yeah, they're not federal. So, so that means the police officers can run around just committing crime. 
being police officers. <laughs> 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 it's, like, it's just another Tuesday night for us. <laughs> another Tuesday night. <laughs> it's running around just sprinkling like weed and like coke everywhere. I'm like, nope. <laughs> like, Bill, you shot my dog and beat your wife? Purge him for another two days. Like, oh, the purge. <laughs> oh, shit. I mean, yeah. God damn it. I, I meant to set my calendar. <laughs> I see a cop now. He's like shoots a couple of people and then put drops them back. He's like, "Hey, Joe, 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 you don't have to do that tonight." <laughs> Damn it, <man>, you're right. <laughs> Hold them to that for later. Oh, we got a phone ringing. Damn it. It's okay. I'll cut all this out. And you're live. Hi, this is our moms think we're funny. What can we do for you? <laughs> Um, yeah, well, um, I was wondering, um, and by the way, I listen to you guys all the time, but I just had a curious uh, question. Big fan, so, big fan. <laughs> when are you guys actually going to be funny? And oh. do we have to know your mom's in order to be able to get the joke? Oh, sorry, well, you're disconnected, okay, well. <laughs> hey, when that happens. Oh, I think we have another caller. <laughs> Hi, yeah, I'm racist. <laughs> Would the purge be okay for racism? <laughs> Well, are you are you just racist on the night of the purge, or are you are you racist like any other time? Shit, I'm racist all the time. I yeah. just won't talk about it except on the purge. Oh, oh that would be a thing, man. Like, you would have like like clan rallies, <laughs> like, oh, like neo Nazis just coming out like hey, we can do this today. We don't need your fucking permit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> you have like a you would have like a like a new like viral in that video. Hide your sheep, hide your goats. They fucking everybody. <laughs> <laughs> They're raping everybody in here. <laughs> oh God, if if I if I shot a uh, a reboot of the Purge franchise, he would be the newscaster. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because you wouldn't have your regular newscaster out there. You'd have to a, a, a the expendable one. Yeah, <laughs> just, just like it's in the news studio. It's like, all right, for the next 12 hours, all crime is legal. Hide your wife, hide your kids. <laughs> they raping everybody up in here. <laughs> that's when uh, that's when Ben Affleck got that back tat. Was during the purge. <laughs> he's like, like he, he actually had a really good idea for a phoenix. And he's like, he was in there, didn't realize it was purge night. And the guy was like, yeah, I'm going to fuck this shit up. This is legal. <laughs> I just imagine a bunch of like disgruntled tattoo artists just like gunning him down in the streets like hold him down <laughs> Joe get that ugly ass chicken drawing put it on his back <laughs> no yeah, I, I said the whole concept of the purge is just so damn stupid it, it is like, I, I, I would hate it because so let's say, let's say I, I so let's say I'm just a regular person during the purge. Purge happens. Now, like, you know, when has my house been all, like, busted? Okay, shit. You know, now I got to get the, you know, get my windows all fixed. My car is fucked up. Can't get into work today. Not to right. mention that the roads are all destroyed, probably. It's probably, right. <laughs> like, burned out vehicles and shit everywhere. You know, I got probably dead bodies on my lawn. You know, someone's <laughs> spray painted, like, you know, part of my house or whatever. It's a section of maybe it's on fire. Right. Or, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, during the purge, um, someone, I, I'm out there purging, and I come back and someone's, like, squatting my house. It's mine now! It's legal! I stole it! Like, shit. I stole your house! <laughs> <laughs> See, people always think, they always go into, like, the part about the, the, the killing and the looting and the, the rape and stuff, but you don't think about the other stuff that you can do, like, yeah. you see, like, the like, tax returns are, like, squatting, like, <laughs> During the purge, I'm going to forge all these documents. Guess what? This whole, all these houses are now mine. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, oh, well, I'm a, I'm a hacker. I've hacked myself into the government system. I'm president now. Right. Surprise, motherfuckers. I mean, they never cover that. And it would be so much more interesting. It would. It would be so much more interesting than a bunch of retards and glowy glow stick masks trying to hit people with machetes. Firemen actually run around starting fires. Just a purge! <laughs> <laughs> it's not opposite day, asshole. It's just a purge. <laughs> Did you do this? No, we didn't start the fire. <laughs> always burning <laughs> yeah I just I mean like the movies could be interesting and they could explore like even like fun concepts of it but they just they won't 
rather than some guy, like, hunkering down with the security system that he sold all his neighbors, I want to see him, like, rig up a bunch of, like, Rube Goldberg-type, like, Home Alone traps. Oh, yeah. That would be funny. And, I mean, I, I know it's not a comedy. It's supposed to be a horror thriller or whatever bullshit. But it's, like... Like, you, you could actually have an... Like, it, it would be a really interesting, like, a, a, like a siege-type movie kind of a thing. Hmm. Of, like, you know, oh, hey, you know, rather than taking advantage of my neighbors so they're all pissed off at me, it's like, hey, everybody can come here, and I guarantee you'll be safe. And then, yeah, just, like, bowling ball catapults and trebuchets. <laughs> and... Oh, man, you know what I would do during Purge? Burn down the banks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, erase the debt record. <laughs> Um, me, okay, so, here's another idea. There's injustice in the world, bad things are happening, and there's, like, a, a riot that starts. Kind of like what was going on in China, like, before, you know, um, you know, everything happened. Mm -hmm. Where they were, like, you know, they, they were protesting for all these, you know, for just countless days. Yeah. So, protests are going on, and, um, and it, the government's like, okay, you know, enough of this. The protests then, of course, turned violent. And so you got this 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 riot that's going on. So then the government just says, "Okay, look, what we're going to do is we're going to say that we're not going to hold any of you people so, responsible for the riots." To so promise me that during the riot, there's somebody up on top of a building dangling somebody off, and they're going, "Throw her off the roof! <laughs> Throw her off the roof!" <laughs> so so during that though, they say, "Okay, you know what? We're not gonna hold, no one's going to be. Um, you guys want to riot and you want to do all this stuff? Okay, fine." For the next 12 hours, this is all legal. Okay. Now, at the end of this, if you guys are still rioting, if you haven't gotten this all out of your system, then we're gonna just, we're gonna like bomb your city, you know, whatever it is that you're, you're, you're you know, um, you know, we're just gonna do that. Yeah. Just and from orbit. but so after 12 hours, you know, everyone's you know, since everything is, is legal, they just really just go all out. And, you know, 12 hours, I mean, you know, after 12 hours of riding, I'm probably kind of tired. I, I mean, honestly, I'm kind of old. I probably would not really be able to last after, like, two hours of riding. Like, you know, I'm kind of tired. I'm going to put down my club and just sever head and go home. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan, you got magic legs. Yeah, cut him off that guy over there. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> look at me, Forrest. Look at me. <laughs> I see, like, Lieutenant Look at me, Shrek. I'm trotting. <laughs> I can trot, Shrek. <laughs> I can see, like, what if uh, if Dan, like, never made up with Forrest, and, and he cuts up his legs, and he's, like, holding him in front of his face, like, wiggling back and forth, going, run, Forrest, run! <laughs> <laughs> Dan, that's my legs. <laughs> Dan, something bit my legs off. Uh, and that's how that's how it starts, and um, and then it becomes, like, this, this thing after that where people that are unhappy... The purge is then like a time for them to uh, like protest and riot for that twelve hours yeah. to express their unhappiness. Nice. And then of course from there, I think the the problem with it is it needs to it needs to spill over. So what if at the end? So I think another part of this is too is that you're counting everybody obeying the rules. Right. But what if six o'clock comes and people are like, now I'm having too much fun. Right. <laughs> And not just one person or two, but like everybody, like the majority of the people are like, because all you need is, as say in a city, all you need is like a couple hundred people that are like, no, fuck it, we're still purging. Yeah. And everyone else can be like, well, if they're still purging, I'm still purging, because at one point you'd be like, mm -hmm. I, I got to protect myself here. I got a bunch of people marching down the street with guns and torches and, you know, baseball bats with nails in them and stuff. And, yeah. and this guy, what, is he, does he really have a chainsaw? You know? <laughs> And then it's like, well, shit, I gotta do something. Right, yeah. And then, you know, it's not stopping. And and it just gets out of control. And then it turns into this thing where, okay, now we're in like day 15 of the purge here. Um, <laughs> that that could be pretty interesting. That it like, I like I like the idea of it getting out of hand. But I, I, I still really like my idea of like just setting up a bunch of traps. Because, you know, I mean, it could be that like, they've, they've act, instead of like rigging up their home with traps, that they've got like, this big barn or something that they've just completely surrounded with traps. And it's like they've just, you know, they've... You know, they've, they've got everything going on, so you can have, like, spike pits and, like, swinging logs and all kinds of stuff. The only bad thing about that is that once the trap's been set off... Yeah. <laughs> so, if, if, you know, and people can probably, like, march in, like, single file. 
So once that first like 20 or 30 people go through, mm-hmm. you now have a clear opening straight to your house. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, there'd, there'd have to be contingencies worked out. You know what, what I think what you'd have to do is you'd have to, um... Oh, you'd have to make it like a maze. Mm, yeah. Set up a labyrinth. Mm-hmm. And you have it where the traps are controlled by you, kind of like kind of move like the video game Night Trap, mm-hmm. where you can designate which traps you want to activate at which time. Yeah. So if you have like a bunch of like uh, trap doors, it's not just the way when it opens up, um, they fall through, and now it's, oh, and they have, there's a pit of spikes, and it's still open. Like yeah. it opens up and then closes again. You know. Um, yeah. And if you have like a maze, you could then like have um like a labyrinth or like a, where you could have it like rotate mm-hmm. like the movie like labyrinth or whatever you have it yeah. rotate so then you can constantly people that are trapped in it are then being steered yep. into the areas you want them to go or you could have like walls shift kind of like train tracks where mm-hmm. you just like see them hit a switch and they just go like and you yep. know all the walls are like three feet in a different position yep yeah that would be pretty interesting that would be pretty cool yeah so I wouldn't hate a movie like that no I wouldn't either and then, of course, he would have to have, like, his panic button where he's just, like, rigged up his control room with a bunch of bombs and he has to touch that off at the very end. Mm. I got an idea about well, something else for, like, my concept of the purge, like, where it just gets out of hand. Yeah. Is that, you know, the president starts freaking out and he's like, you know, this is getting out of hand. It's like, this isn't how it's supposed to be. And the guy that came up with is like, no, this is always how it was supposed to be. Oh, nice. I knew that this would happen. I counted on this happening. <laughs> this is what was supposed to happen the whole time. It's like, Why? Why not? <laughs> nice. I've lived in this world the way it was the like all my life. This is how the world has been. Everyone plays by the rules. Just once, I want to see what it's like if they don't play by the rules. I want something new. I want something different. I don't have an agenda. I'm not expecting them to, them to like we're gonna start all brand, start a new, whatever. I want to live in a world that's different than the world I've lived in for the past like 50 years of my life. Right, you know? right. And this is it. It's just different. And it's, from, and it's not it's not sewn from like an architect, you know, like we're going to kill all these people here and then we're going to, I've got this plan to like make everything different. No, whatever arises out of this, it rises purely out of chaos. Right. I have no idea what's going to come from it, but whatever it is, it's going to be something new. It's going to be something different and it's going to be exciting. Yeah. And then he's like, I was like, I'm excited, Mr. President. Are you excited? No. And I think you're a madman. <laughs> it's like, you don't find that exciting? <laughs> <laughs> they call me a madman. All right. So those are some good, those are some good ideas, and we are actually nearing the hour mark. So, yeah. you know, I'm I'm happy uh, laying this to rest. Honestly, mm-hmm. I I feel I feel like what we did there is completely better than the movie we got. And to be fair, movies plural. Movies we got, yeah. And to be fair, still haven't watched it, but have no desire to. So you know, there's that. <laughs> So, Akomi. So? So, uh, what'd you do last night during the purge? You know, I killed like 20 people. <laughs> what did you do? I torrented some shit off Pirate Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. It's the only time I don't feel guilty about it. So, you know, after I went out and, you know, a couple of, a couple of people torched some things, I was really kind of tired, so I went home and guess what? Your home wasn't there. No, no. Now I'm enrolled in Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's what I would do. I would, you know, you're talking about like going online and hacking stuff. I'd make it so that like I was like a new professor, like <laughs> with tenure of Harvard. Oh yeah, once you got tenure, it's all over with. Holy oh, shit! I could I could get like a, a job as a college professor teaching about the purge. Nice. <laughs> Here's purge 101. How to survive through the purge. I'm into it. <laughs> and, you know, all my students would would get A's too. <laughs> Because it's like, you know, look to your left, look to the right. <laughs> One of the people you just looked at will not survive on purge night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. Yeah, because if you fail the class, you know, well, come purge night, you're probably going to be dead. <laughs> yeah, that works. <laughs> All right, well, uh, yeah. I, th- I think that's good, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, well, thanks everybody for giving us a listen. You know, you know Purge Night in Canada, is that people just don't have to say sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you didn't hold the door open for me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
We will see you tomorrow. <laughs> but then the next day, be like, hey, Joe. Sorry I didn't hold her the offer for you yesterday. <laughs> no, understandable. <laughs> it's okay. It was the purge. You were going through some stuff. Did you? Oh, by the way, did you hear about, like, you know, we've been dealing with all this shit during you know, the whole corona thing with people, like, stockpiling meat and, um, and like, toilet paper and all that kind of stuff. Did you hear about what happened in Canada? No. Like, the grocery stores are completely dry of maple syrup. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I hear it's the scariest fucking thing that's ever happened to them. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I would have assumed that like the stores always were kind of low on maple syrup. No, not like this, man. <laughs> not like this. Not like this. <laughs> There's not a back issue of Alpha Fight to be found anywhere. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean people in Canada are just losing their minds. <laughs> but the the on the bright side though, the empty shelves they are finding a stockpile of IOUs. Oh, finally. Yeah. So like. What the store's empty? They got maroon to play hockey. So, so, so he's like, "Sorry, I took all your maple syrup, eh? I owe you one bottle." <laughs> uh, all right. Well, hey, thanks everybody. Yeah, man. Please, um, uh, please spare us on the night of the purge. That's right. You, uh, oh, you know what I think I would do to really fuck with people on the night of the purge? Hmm. I think I would do a one continuous twelve-hour live stream podcast. Like, you're torturing us, but it's legal. <laughs> like, stop, stop, he's already dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Bye, everybody. All right there, folks, that was... Our moms think we're funny. Let's, uh, let's give them a hand.